One Small Place in a Tree by Barbara Brenner, illustrated by Tom Leonard. A Tree Hole One small place in a tree. How does it get there? Who lives inside? Suppose that you could watch a hole from its beginning. You might see something like this. Here's one oak tree in a forest. It looks like the others, except a black bear uses this one as a scratching post. Every time she goes by, the bear sharpens her claws on the trunk. You're walking in the woods. You see the tree and notice the scratch marks on the bark. Maybe you even catch a glimpse of the bear. After a while, the scratching chips some pieces off the bark of the tree. A cut forms in the bark. A hole in the tree is beginning. Next time you're walking there, you see a tiny, that tiny bugs have found the cut. They're timber beetles, and they're about to set up housekeeping. The timber beetles get under the bark and bore into the tree. They make a maze of tunnels. They create spaces called cradles for their eggs and they plant fungi for the colony to feed on. Imagine that you look inside, you see something like this. Soon the fungi spread and are growing all over the walls of the tunnels. The beetle eggs have hatched into grubs. The grubs are feeding on the fungi, and the fungi are feeding on the soft wood inside the tree. The beetle grubs become full-grown timber beetles. They eat their way out of the chambers and make more holes in the tree. On your next visit, you count more than 10 holes, but the first one is the largest. One time when you're near the tree, you actually hear the sound of beetles chewing wood. A red-bellied red woodpecker hears it too. The bird flies to the tree holes. It spears the beetles with its sharp beak or pulls them out with its long tongue. Many woodpeckers visit the oak tree to eat and after a summer, they've cleared the holes of beetles and beetle grubs, but they've made the big hole even bigger. Now disease strikes. Bacteria come in through the hole in the tree. You won't see the bacteria, they're too small. But you can see the damage they've done. The tree has heart rot. It's dying inside and out. Bark begins to loosen and fall off. The hole is now so large that you can actually see inside. It has become a hollow place that looks as if it could be home for something. The first animal to use it is a flying squirrel. You find the squirrel holed up in there one winter day. You notice that it has stored some nuts under the loose bark around the hole. When you come by in the spring, the flying squirrel is gone. The hole is empty, but not for long. A pair of bluebirds moves in. The hole is just right for bluebirds, high enough off the ground for safety. The bluebirds line the hole with weeds and grass. Soon there are six bluish eggs in the nest hole. Next time you look inside, there are six bluebird chicks. The chicks stay safe in the nest until they're old enough to fly. By this time, the oak tree is no longer sending out leaves. Almost all of its bark is gone, but the hole dwellers don't seem to care. For the next three springs, the hole in the tree is a nest for the same pair of bluebirds. For the next three winters, it's home to a family of white-footed mice. In all those three years, the tree hasn't grown at all. This oak tree is dead, but the hole is full of life. A hairy woodpecker sometimes comes to roost there, a gray squirrel often uses the hole as a hiding place. When the hole has water in it, you can sometimes see a tree frog there. 
one day lightning or high wind or heavy rain or snow will bring this dead tree down. Many years later, all that may be left will be a log with a hole in it. But the hole will still be a place for living things. A small garter snake may cool off in there. A red-backed salamander may lay its eggs in there. Or maybe a hammock spider will make a web across the hole to catch swarming insects. Living trees are important, but so are dead and dying trees. A dead tree often has a hole, one small place that is usually home for something.